All right, now that we reviewed graphing inequalities in our last lesson, now we're going to put that together with what we learned about solving equations, and now we're going to solve inequalities. So you're going to find that it's very similar to solving an equation. We're going to start with just the basic one step, so there's not a lot going on in the problems, but that's because there's one small twist that we have to watch for when we're solving inequalities that's different from an equation. Otherwise, everything else is exactly the same. So for instance, we're going to solve each of these just like we would an equation. 4 is greater than or equal to x minus 6. So we draw a line down through our inequality. We focus on our variable. What did they do to x? Well, they subtracted 6. So I'm going to add 6. Subtracting 6 and adding 6 becomes 0, so it drops out. We're left with x. 4 plus 6 is 10. Our inequality symbol just slides down. It's still greater than or equal to 10. Now, one thing some of us are going to have trouble with is when the number is first and then the variable, it gets challenging to make sure we shade the right direction on our number line. So as you saw with Mrs. King last video, sometimes you can rewrite your inequality. You can flip it around, switch the variable and the number. But remember, when you switch the order of those two pieces, you got to switch the inequality. You basically flipped the inequality backwards, so it becomes less than or equal to 10. That 10 is what goes in the middle of our number line. And then we just number it going up and down. So basically think of it as creating a small little chunk of a number line. We want less than or equal to, so we're okay being equal to 10. So we're gonna use a closed circle because it's okay to be equal to 10. And then X is less than 10. So I'm gonna shade going to the left because I want the numbers that are less than 10. Same thing we did with an equation. We just have to graph it on a number line when we're done w plus 3 is less than 6. So again, focus in your variable. They added 3, so I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to subtract 3. w is less than 3. So 3 goes in the middle of my number line. That inequality symbol just slid down. Now when I get into the negatives, I'm kind of counting backwards into the negatives. w is less than 3, so I'm going to do an open circle at 3. And I want numbers that are less than 3, so that's going to be my left-hand side. Some people like to do their shading right on the line. Some people like to do it above the line. Either one's fine, as long as I can tell which way you went. To do your check, you're just going to use your number line. Basically, pick one of your numbers anywhere along your number line. Negative 1, plug it in. Negative 1 plus 3, well, that's 2. Is 2 less than 6? Sure, that works. Here, maybe we pick a 7. It doesn't matter as long as you pick any number along the side you shaded. Just don't pick the number right in the middle where your circle is. Plug in 7. 7 minus 6. Well, that's 1. Is 4 greater than or equal to 1? Yeah. So we know we shaded the right way. That check lets you make sure you shaded the right side of the line or the correct side of the line. Now, here's the one thing to watch for. It only happens when you're doing your multiplying or dividing step and only when you multiply or divide by a negative. We're going to have to watch and do something special with it, so watch carefully. Let's try this one first. 4m is less than or equal to negative 24. Well, 4m means 4 times m, so I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to divide by 4. So I'm just dividing by a positive number, so nothing fancy is going to happen. 4 divided by 4 is 1, or just m less than or equal to negative 24 divided by positive 4 is going to be a negative 6. It was negative, it stays negative. So remember on my negative number line, it's going to count in reverse. So as I count up towards 0 to the right and then down into the negatives, going to the left, I want less than or equal to, so I want a closed circle because it's okay to be equal to negative 6, and then I want numbers less than that. So I'm going to shade in everything going to the left. Remember to put that big arrowhead there to show us that it's all those numbers, even if that number line were to continue, I would still want all those numbers. Now, watch what happens on the next one. So x over negative 2. So that means x divided by negative 2. So I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to multiply by negative 2. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1 just x. Negative 6 times negative 2 is a positive 12. Here's what happened. 
by multiplying by a negative, I switched the sign of my number. So basically I flip-flopped it from one side of my number line to the other. Whenever that happens, a little alarm needs to go off in your head, and what's gonna happen is your inequality symbol gets flipped. So instead of being greater than, it becomes less than, because I flipped from the negative side to the positive. I basically flipped to the other side of my line, so my inequality needs to flip with me. And watch, when we go to check, you're gonna see there's a reason we did that. So x is less than 12, so I want an open circle, and I want numbers that are less than 12. And here's why. Let's do a check, but let's check one on the other side this time. What if I put in 16? Because before I flipped that inequality, I would have been chaining numbers that are greater than 12. So put in 16. 16 divided by negative 2 is negative 8. Is negative 8 greater than negative 6? No, it's not. Negative 8 is actually smaller than negative 6. So that's why I know I wasn't supposed to shade that line. Because I multiplied by negative, I switched the sign of that number, which caused my inequality to have to flip as well. So down here, negative 3y means negative 3 times y. So I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to divide by negative 3. Negative 3 divided by negative 3 is just 1, or just y. 12 divided by negative 3 becomes negative 4. I switched its signs. Because I switched the signs, I'm flipping between my negatives and my positives. So my greater than or equal to becomes less than or equal to. I flip that. Negative 4 is in the middle. So negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1. Negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, and negative 9. I want less than or equal to. So I want a closed circle because I want to be equal to negative 4. And I want numbers that are less than. So I'm going to shade all my numbers going to the left. Okay. If I hadn't switched that inequality, I would have grabbed something like 0. Well, what's negative 3 times 0? Well, that's 0. Is 0 greater than or equal to 12? No, it's not. So that's why I didn't want this side of the line. I wanted my less than. When I multiply by that negative number, it causes my inequality to flip. All right, last one. Negative 6 is less than x over 5. So x over 5 is x divided by 5. So I'm going to do the opposite, is multiply by 5. And I get x. 5 times negative 6 is negative 30. It stayed negative. So I didn't switch its sign, so I don't have to switch anything else. It's just going to stay less than. Now, again, it can be tricky when the variable is second and the number is first. So if it helps, go ahead and switch those two but you gotta flip the inequality. It was opening towards the x, it still needs to open up towards the x. Put negative 30 in the middle, negative 29, negative 28, negative 31, negative 32. I want greater than, so I want an open circle, and I want numbers that are greater than negative 30. Well, that's going to my right. So in this case, I multiplied both sides by a positive number, so I didn't need to flip anything. It's only when you multiply or divide both sides by a negative. You're switching the sign. That's where we have to switch that inequality. All right, we'll practice tomorrow.